Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for founders of Teotihuacan. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing about half of a game today. Now, before I go into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel, then you can do so by going to patreon.com slash John Gets Games, and there you can gain access to a variety of perks, including my opinions episodes, where I talk about my subjective opinions about all the games that I'm playing, and you'll also also gain access to some videos early and advertisement free. The last thing I'd like to ask is if while you were watching this, some turn jumps out to you as like, you should have done something differently, or if some aspect of the game is really interesting to you, then please comment about it down below because I love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In it, each player is an architect trying to develop the best plans for the city of Teotihuacan. Now, all of us have our own board in front of ourselves, and as we go through the game, we are going to use our action discs in order to construct various buildings onto our boards, and these will produce us resources, and we can also use these resources to place temples down into our overall city. Now, the temples come along with worship tiles, and we can activate these worship tiles to gain the benefits listed on them every time we perform this action down here. Now, the other type of tile we put into the city are pyramid tiles. We add those down into the middle, building up a pyramid in the very middle of the city. Now, all three of these types of tiles are important because the buildings make the resources that you then spend to construct the temples and the pyramid pieces. Once the game is over, these pyramid pieces are going to score points for the matching temple type that it is next to in that quadrant of the overall city. So we're trying to make multiplier combos going with the red temples next to red pyramid tiles, green next to green, and blue next to blue. Now, the way we actually perform these actions is by using our action tokens to then go onto available spots to then do the top or bottom option for that specific area. Now, the strength of this action is depicted by the number of tokens there, including this cardboard, and that means if I went here and my opponent went there, they would be using my token to add to their overall strength. And you are allowed to put multiple tokens down, which will increase the strength of that action, but the more tokens you put down onto one action, the less actions you take overall within that specific round. Now, once we play through a certain number of rounds, the game will come to an end, and that's when we will perform the final scoring, where the pyramid tiles and the temples are going to be multiplied together. Now, that was a very high-level overview of the game, and there's quite a bit I haven't even covered just yet, but don't worry, I'll explain how all of this works in detail while we are actually playing. On that note, let's actually start playing the game, and today we are going to play as the purple player, and we have the first player token, which means we can now take the first turn of the game. So let's focus over here. Now, as you can see, we have five of these action tokens, and if we were playing a two-player game, we'd actually have six of them. Now, on our turn, we have to either use these action tokens to activate one of these nine different action spots, or we could pass. But once we've passed, we will not take any more actions for the round. Now, as I said, there are these nine different action spots, and as you can see, there are these cardboard tokens on them, and we randomly place these out at the start of the round, and at the start of each subsequent round of the game, we will once again shuffle these up and then put them out onto these spots. Now, these depict various icons on them, and those are bonuses that the first player to activate that spot will gain when they go there. Obviously, no one has activated any locations yet, so by choosing one, we will be the first player, and we will gain that specific benefit. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that these nine action spots are split into three overall columns, and that's important because when we choose a specific action spot to go with, that will define the overall column of the game that we are going to activate. Every time we choose an action, we can either do the top option, which is going to be a build action, or the bottom option, which will be an influence type action. As you can see, there are three different build action options, and there are three different influence action options as well, so there are a total of six different action types in the game. Now, for our first turn, I think we actually want to go over here, and when we do this, we could put one, two, or three of our action tokens down. That's because each one of these stacks can have a total of four tokens on it before it's full, and these cardboard tokens also count for that amount. That means by putting this right over here, that has a total of two discs on that spot. So if there were three player discs, then that specific action spot is full and cannot be placed on for the rest of the round. Now, we only have five action tokens for this entire round, so if we spent all three of them like this, we would only have two other action tokens to spend. 
Now, one of the reasons it might make sense to put extra tokens down is because this increases the strength of the action. Now, with that in mind, let's now perform the turn, and I think we're just going to place one token down. And as you can see, we covered up this symbol. That is the building symbol, as you can see it matches up with that, and this means that either before or after we take our main action, we can then perform a build action with any one of the three build options. Now I think we'll activate this bonus after we do our main action, so let's perform the main action. Now as I said before, the strength of this action is going to be equivalent to the number of player tokens and this cardboard piece on that spot. So this means we have a strength of two, and now we have to either do the build action in this associated column, or the influence action in the column. Now the strength of this action only matters if we are doing a build action. So if we were to do an influence action, we could ignore the number of disks entirely and just perform this option. Now we are going to be building on this turn, so that means we're going to construct one of these three buildings. Now these are production buildings. The brown ones will produce wood for us, the gray ones will produce stone, and the golden ones will produce us gold. In this case, I think we want to build a wood production building, and as you can see, each of these has a different size. Now the size of a building is the number of squares in the grid it occupies. As you can see, this is effectively a size two piece because it will occupy two spaces in the grid. In order to take a size two piece, we have to have a strength of two. That means right now we could not even take any of the size three or even four pieces because our strength is two. If we really wanted this massive gold piece, for example, then we would have had to spend all three of these to get to a strength four to take it. Now I feel like that's probably not the best idea for us right now, so we're going to go a little bit slower. We have a strength value of 2, which does mean we have enough strength to construct this wooden building. Next up, we have to actually construct this tile into our city. As you can see, our city board is made up of a grid of small squares around the edges, and then there is a 3x3 three three grid of larger squares right in the middle. Now, only pyramid tiles can go into this middle area, and only non-pyramid tiles can go into the outer areas. Now, whenever we go to place these tiles into our city, we first have to find our architect. Now, each player's architect starts the game looking at different parts of their city, and that's important because you can only construct entirely within the architect's reach. The reach for an architect is the half of the city that is closest to them. So that means at the start of the game for us, only this top half of the board is legal for us to place any tiles into. So that means we have to place this up here. You can't even just barely go over the edge. That would be illegal. You also can't go over the edge of the board or sneak into the pyramid section, and you cannot overlap with any other tiles on your board. Now you are allowed to overlap these mask icons as well as these resource cubes. If we wanted to, we could place this like that and then discard these cubes back to the supply, but that's probably not a good move for us right now. Now I will explain why we actually have these resource cubes quite soon, and I think for this placement, let's put it right over here. Now the first thing you'll note is we've just covered up two of these mask icons. And these are important because every time you cover up all of the mask icons within one cluster, you then take the highest value mask bonus token and immediately get those points. We just covered up two tokens in this type of masks area, and the first person to cover up all of those from one of those clusters will get nine points. Then it goes down to seven, five, and three. And it's worth noting that the number of masks that we have out here available is going to change with the player count. So, covering up two out of the six over here does feel pretty good, although we still have four more of these to cover, and hopefully we can do that before any of our opponents completely cover up one of their sections that has these icons. Now, as you can see, there are multiple sections with those icons, but you only have to cover up all of the masks within one group in order to gain that mask token. Alright, we've now constructed this wood building, and the next thing that we do is fully surround it with wooden resources. We're going to place one wooden resource cube onto every empty orthogonally adjacent spot around this building. That means we are going to get to place six of these down, and that is part of the reason why we put it over here. If we had one or two, we could have nestled it against the edge, but then we would have only placed four of these resources down. And at this point in the game, I think I like the idea of making more of these cubes so that we can spend them soon, and then worry about actually filling in all of these gaps as we continue to play. I'm sure you noticed we started the game with some tiles on our board already, and we gained those during a setup where we placed these pyramid tiles down, and they also gained resources all the way around them. Well, we've now finished our main action over here, and I do want to point out that every time you go to add one of these buildings onto your board, you only add one building, no matter what your strength is. If you have four strength, you are not allowed to split that amongst other buildings, and if you have more strength than you need, then you don't gain any benefits for the excess. With this main action done, we can now take the benefit of the bonus we just covered up. Again, that lets us do any type of build action. This means we could construct another one of these production buildings, or we could construct a temple, or we could construct a pyramid piece onto the middle spaces of our board. 
In this case, I think let's build a temple. Now, when we do this, it's just as if we had activated one of these actions down here and chosen that build option above. Also, when you gain bonus actions like this and strength matters, then the strength of your initial placement is what counts. Remember, our strength is 2, so that means we are going to look over here and do a temple construction action with a strength of 2. As you can see, there are three different colored buildings. The green ones are a size 3, the blue ones are a size 4, and the red ones are a size 5. Within these colors, every temple is the same size and shape, and when we go to construct this, we can build any of them no matter what our strength is, but we're going to have to spend extra resources to make up for strength deficits. As you can see, there are main costs for each of these. The green ones cost a stone and a wood, blue is two stone, and red is a stone and a gold, but underneath those, there is another resource with a gray background. Now, for every strength that we don't have to match the size of that temple, we have to spend this associated type of resource. That means if we wanted to build this red temple right now, it would be a stone and a gold, just as it always was, but then this is a size 5 compared to our strength 2, so that means we have 3 strength to make up, so we would have to spend 3 more stone. So overall, that would be four stone and a gold. Now, I think what we want to do is instead go for the cheapest temple. It is a size three and we have a strength two. So that means we'll have to spend a stone, a wood, plus one more wood to make up for the one strength difference between our token and the size of this temple. The way we spend resources is quite simple. We just remove those tokens from the board and put them back into the supply. I do want to say that whenever you spend resources, you can always spend two gold, and those can act as either a wood or a stone. Now that's a little bit costly, especially considering gold is very important for constructing your pyramid, but it's a nice way to get some flexibility if you need it. Fortunately, we have the stone and the wood that we need. Remember, we need to spend one stone and two wood. Now, I think we're actually going to be constructing this over there, and because of that, let's spend these two wood tokens before we actually go onto that spot. Remember, when you place these tiles down, you can always cover up resources, but then they are discarded, so it makes sense to pay with the resources that are in your way in order to make room and not actually waste those resources. Now that we've made that payment, we can put this down, and it must be within our architect's reach. And again, I think this is a great move for us, because as you can see, we've covered up two more of that mask type, so there are just two more to cover before we can take that mask token. And again, the best one is nine points, which is a significant amount. Now, after we construct a temple, we always have to take a new worship tile. I'm sure you noticed these stacks of tiles up here that match the color of the temples, and there are always going to be two of them face up. Whenever we construct a temple of that specific color, we choose one of these two and we put it face up in front of ourselves, and I think let's take this one here. As soon as one is chosen, we immediately refresh the market. If we took this one, we would simply put a new one down there and reveal here, but since we took from the top, we just revealed the top tile and put it back on top of the stack. Now I do want to point out that no matter what the player count is, at the start of every round we are going to have two of each temple type over here. As you can see we built one of the two green, so there is only one more green available to be constructed with a build action in this round. So we can add our worship tile to our area. As you can see we already have one of these, we gained it during setup when we built this temple over here. Now I'll talk about how we activate these worship tiles soon enough, because as you can see they each have different icons on them, which show various costs, conditions, and benefits. Well, at this point, we are just about done with our turn, and the final thing that we always have to do is move our architect clockwise around our city. That means on our next turn, the architect's reach will be this half over here. Now our turn is done, so we can move clockwise over, and the orange player can take their first turn. After considering their options, they're going to place one action token over here. Remember, they could have added more tokens if they wanted to, but they decided a strength value 2 action was just fine with them. Now, as you can see, they also covered up a build bonus action, so they can build any of these types before or after their main action. In this case, they've decided to do their main action first, and when they do that, that means they have to choose to either build a pyramid tile, or they could perform this influence action down here. For the moment, they want to build a pyramid tile, and they can choose any of these six. They've decided to build a blue pyramid tile, and as you can see, underneath every single one of these spots, it shows two victory points. That means whenever you successfully construct a pyramid piece from the board like this, you gain two points. Now, they do have to pay for this, and the cost for pyramids is illustrated down here. It's always going to be two gold plus one wood, and then for every strength that you do not have, it will cost an extra gold. Now, these pyramid tiles are functionally a size four, and the strength value for orange is currently just two. That means they are missing out on two strength, so in order to do this, they will have to spend two gold plus a wood plus two more gold, so that is four gold total. 
Of course, if they wanted to, they could have placed three tokens like this to get to a strength value of four, and in that case, they would simply spend two gold and one wood, but they've decided they would rather hold on to their action tokens and pay some extra gold. So let's focus over here, and they are going to spend one, two, three, and then a fourth gold right there. After that, they do need to spend one wood, and they are going to take this wood, and you'll notice that whenever you spend resources, it does not need to be within your architect's reach. The reach only matters for adding tiles down into the city. So they've spent one wood and four gold. Now they have to actually add this onto their pyramid, and the architect's reach does matter for this because they are adding a tile to their city. Now the reach for the architect with these pyramids is always going to be these six spaces that are closest to the architect. That means orange could place over here, but they would not be able to place onto any of those spots over there. Obviously, once the architect moves, this will change the six pyramid spots that are within the architect's reach. So let's focus in more. Now I'm sure you've noticed this tile right over here, and everybody starts the game by placing it onto their board, and this helps illustrate stacking tiles on top. Now you can only stack a pyramid tile on top of others if there is a base of four tiles underneath it already. That means this would be an illegal play, so right now they have only two spots they could technically put this tile. They've decided to go with this spot here, and it's worth noting in the future when they build another pyramid, they could stack up as long as this position is once again within the reach of the architect. And it's also worth noting that you can stack up to a third level, which would be a tile in the very middle, and that spot is always within the architect's reach no matter where it is around the board. So the orange player is going to put their pyramid piece here, and remember they did gain two points from the icons on the board. Players track their points on their own board, so orange can simply push their token over twice, and they are going to place over here. As you can see, they just covered up an icon, and that is a bonus that they immediately get, and as you can see, that lets them construct a blue temple without having to spend any resources. Now that temple is going to come from the supply, not from the board, but they do still have to place this within their architect's reach. As you can see, there are other bonuses. This one gives you two points and lets you construct a size one wood or stone building, and you put that down according to the normal rules, and then you place resources around it. Then this lets you build a green temple, and that lets you build a red temple. And finally, this icon lets you take any of the face-up worship tiles, and you put it in front of you. Once again, orange is going to gain a blue temple, so they will take it from the supply, not from the main board. Now they have to place this onto their board, and it must be within their architect's reach. After considering their options, they're going to place it like this, and they've covered up three out of those five mask icons in that cluster. After placing a temple, you must always take a worship tile of that color, so orange will gain a blue worship tile. And these are the current options available to them. Each one of these gives the orange player an ability to score points. This one would get them six points if they activate this worship tile while having four or more of the size one wooden production buildings. And this one would give them up to nine points, where they multiply the number of their green temples by the number of wood production buildings they have of any size. Now, again, I haven't described how we actually activate these, but as you can see, both of these blue tiles have to do with gaining points based off of the way you've built your city. After considering them, orange will take this tile. Then we need to reveal a new one. Uh -huh. And that one is a larger but slightly more flexible version of this one. So Orange can place that worship tile in their area, and they have now finished their pyramid building action. They were able to put a pyramid tile down that let them build a temple, so that was quite a bit. And of course their turn is not done, because they now can make use of this bonus build action here. Now this lets them do any of these three different build types, and they are going to construct another blue temple. As you can see, that is going to cost them two stone and then one wood for each strength they don't have. The blue temples are size four, and orange currently has a strength of two, so that means they have to spend two stone and two wood to make up for that strength difference. Now, orange has a bunch of resources already, so they have no problem spending these. The two wood will be those right there, and then for the stone, they'll get rid of this one and that one. Next up, they have to build this within their architect's reach, and they are going to construct it like that. The moment they do that, they've covered up every mask icon in that cluster, and as you can see, those were pink masks. So they can take the highest value pink mask tile, and that will immediately get them seven victory points. That's going to bring them from two up to nine. And then lastly, they have to take another blue worship tile, and they'll take this one right here. Now we can refresh the market again. And this one gives points if you have one of each of the different sized stone production buildings on your board. 
Well, that's finished up a pretty huge turn for the orange player. They added a pyramid, as well as two temples, and got two worship tiles. They can finish their turn now by moving their architect clockwise around, and now it's time for the blue player to take their first turn. After thinking through their options, they're going to place a single token on this spot here. Now that covered up this token, which shows an influence icon. That means either before or after their main action, they can perform any of the three influence actions. Now I haven't described any of these just yet, but don't worry, I'll get to that soon. Blue is going to activate the influence bonus after their main action. For their main action, they are going to construct a temple. They have a strength value of two, and they've decided to construct a green temple. This is the last one of the green temples that can be constructed from the board in this first round, and it has a size three, and they have a strength two, so that means they will have to spend one stone, one wood, plus one extra wood to make up for the strength difference. So they'll spend one stone, and then the two wood will come from over here. After that, they have to construct this within their architect's reach, and they've decided to put it like this, so it appears that they are also trying to cover up these specific masks that we have started covering up. Again, this is the best one for victory points, and Blue's going to try to cover these up quicker than we do. Of course, if we cover ours up before them, they are still in a good spot to take the second one of those masks, which is still worth 7 points compared to 9 for the best one. After placing a temple, they of course need to take a worship tile, and they placed a green temple, so they have to take one of these two. They've decided to take this worship tile, so we can flip up a new one. And then they can place that in front of themselves. That has finished their main build action, and now the bonus comes into play, where they can perform any one of the three different influence actions. Now with that in mind, I think let's actually talk about what they are, to see which one the blue player actually wants to go with. The first one is over here, and this is called a produce action. The way this works is you can either produce one resource at every one of your production buildings on your board, or you can add two of the size one production buildings to your board, either two stone, two wood, or a wood and a stone. Once again, this produces up to one resource for every production building, which is stone, wood, and gold. Now the blue player does have three of those production buildings, but you'll notice this one over here does not have any free spots. They did not free up one of those, and I think that certainly shows they were not planning on producing right now. That being said, production can be a powerful way to get a bunch of resources, essentially gaining more stuff for the infrastructure that you have already built. Of course, gaining these single pieces can also be nice to get some more resources on the board and to fit them into some of the smaller areas once you start to fill the board in. The next influence action is over here, and this is the favor track. Now, whenever you perform this influence action, you simply move your token once over to the right. You then gain victory points that are showing up above, and then this effect lets you take one of your worship tiles, and you can swap it for any other worship tile. The color does not have to match, and the tile you get rid of goes to the bottom of the stack. So this is a good way to gain some points while also getting better worship tiles for you to activate based off of your current position. Also, the more frequently you do this, the more victory points you get for doing it. Obviously, if you do this four times throughout the game, you will get 20 points overall. Once you've performed this four times, though, you cannot perform it anymore. Well, there's one more influence action, and it's this one, and that lets you activate one of your worship tiles. So you simply choose one of them, and then you do what it says. Sometimes there are conditions on them. Again, we looked at these earlier. In order to activate this one, you have to have five small buildings of any type, and that would get you 12 points for that entire activation. And then others, like this green one, gives them an option. This says they can spend two wood to gain three points, and they can gain a maximum of 12 points. That means they can do this at most four times, which would be eight wood to get 12 points. And considering the blue player has a bunch of wood, this is what they've decided to go with. So they will activate this specific influence action. They will then use this tile because it's the only one they have. And they are actually going to spend all of their wood. As you can see, they have exactly eight left on their board. That means they can do a maximum activation of this worship tile, and that will get them 12 victory points. They have two already because they gained those during setup when they covered this up. So that brings them up to 14. And then this tile will be placed underneath the associated stack. Now that was certainly expensive, Blue has no more wood left available to them, but they got a bunch of points for that tile, and they could build more wood production buildings, as well as activate production to get more wood out of these in the future if they want to. This game is really about balancing making infrastructure, and also squeezing out victory points where you can, and Blue decided to go for it, even though maybe that is going to hamper their construction abilities in the short term. Well, Blue's turn is ending, so they can move their architect, and now it's time for us to take our second turn of the game. 
Overall, I think our focus should be on covering up these two mask spots, considering once we finish this turn, our architect will move over here, and then those will be outside of the architect's reach. So I think focusing on covering these up right now is probably a good idea. And we could do that with a production building, although putting production buildings next to the edge isn't great because you get less resources for those. It certainly would be better to put a temple down over here, and I think that's what we're going to do. Now, if we wanted to, we could stack on top of this spot right over here. If we did that, we would have a strength value of 3. In fact, we could go there with two of them to have a strength value of 4. By doing that, we could then build this blue tile for just two stone without paying any penalties. But of course, we are using some more of these tokens. Now, I think instead of doing this, we're going to place one token over there. The reason for that is because this benefit will immediately get us one victory point, which is nice, and then the other effect says we can perform this action as if we had one more token there. So this will increase our strength, so we now effectively have three strength, and it's also worth noting, you can use this benefit to get up to five strength. If we wanted to, we could put three down like this, and then we would have four plus the one from that icon getting us to five, and then we could build this without any of those associated penalties. For now, though, I think going slow and steady is fine. It does make sense to put multiple tokens down sometimes, but also saving them and going one at a time is a way to get even more actions off of the board. So we have effectively three strength, and that tile also gave us one point. Now let's build the last one of the blue temples that's currently over here on the board. That's going to cost us two stone, and then it's a size four, and our strength is three, again, because of that bonus on the tile. So that means we have to pay one penalty, so that is going to be one wood. Looking back at our board, there's actually a wood token right in the way, so let's certainly pay this. Now, after that, we have to spend two stone, and I figure we'll get rid of these two over here. And then let's place this down onto our board. Unfortunately, when we do this, there is no way to cover up these masks without discarding a wood token. I think we're going to do this, but again, that wood cube is there, so we simply discard it back to the supply. So effectively, there was an extra cost there because we did not plan ahead well enough to remove that before that happened. But either way, this is the plan we went with, so let's continue. Now, of course, the moment we do that, we've covered up every one of these masks in that cluster. So we can take nine points and then discard this mask. We had one point, so this brings us up to ten. And then, of course, we need to gain another worship tile, and this one is going to be blue. Currently, we don't have any small production buildings, but we do have a one stone production building. So I think let's take this one, and then maybe we'll have a new goal of, in the future, building one of each type of stone production building to then be able to activate this later on with an influence action to get 10 points off of it. We also might just not do this one. This is our third worship tile, so we have a, quite a variety when we actually go to activate these. This one right over here, when activated, would get us three points, and then we could perform any influence action. So you could actually use this to then activate another worship tile. This one says we could spend five of any resource in order to build a pyramid and place it down onto our board within our architect's reach. These are pretty good, and this one could be worth a decent amount of points to us at the end of the game if we do work towards it, and again have the action to actually activate it. Before we move on, we need to see a new one of these, and that is another multiplier. It is the blue buildings times the number of the stone production buildings, and again, you get a maximum of nine points for that tile. All right, that has finished our turn, and now it's time for the orange player to go. After thinking through their options, they are going to send one of their action tokens over here, and that bonus looks pretty similar to the one that we just did. This will get them one victory point immediately, and then they will produce one resource of their choice, and they can put it anywhere that is open on their board. Again, they could have put multiple tokens down, but they are going to continue to go slow with these. In this case, they are going to produce a gold with that benefit, and they will also gain the one point. And the gold, when placed, can go anywhere. It does not need to be within their architect's reach. They'll put it over there, and the one point will bring them up to ten. Now they are going to perform this build action, and just like before, they have a strength value of two. Each of these pyramids has an overall size of four, so they have to pay a penalty of two extra gold. So just like their first turn, they will spend four gold and one wood, and they're going to build a second blue pyramid. This will also gain them two points. When we come back to their board, it looks like they have five gold available, and they are going to spend these three as well as this one. They'll leave that one over there in the corner for now. They also need to spend one wood, and they'll get rid of this one. And now when they go to build this into their pyramid, the Architect's Reach brings them to these six locations. Now, as you can see, they could actually build this up there because that is within the Architect's Reach, and there are four tiles underneath it. 
If they instead went over to this one or that one, they would immediately gain the associated benefit, but it looks like they have decided to stack up just like this. By doing that, you'll notice they did not actually cover up any bonuses, so they don't get anything immediately, but this is going to help them with endgame scoring, because the higher pyramid tiles will gain more points than the lower. After this, they do gain two points, again because they built a pyramid from the main board, and now they can end their turn by moving their architect clockwise. Now, at this point, I would actually like to talk a little bit about endgame scoring. I'll explain how the game ends a little bit later, but once the game is over, everyone is going to score their pyramid and temple tiles that are out here on their board. In fact, this is the only endgame scoring that happens. Now, let's focus out a little bit so that we can see both of these boards. Now, the way final scoring works is we just score every single pyramid that is in the center of our board. Now, the value of points we get for each of these pyramid tiles is going to vary. The starting thing to keep in mind is all tiles that are on the game board have a two-point modifier, and all tiles on the second or third level have a three-point modifier. Now, that modifier is going to be multiplied against the number of temples that are within the same quadrant of the board as that pyramid tile. Now, as you can see, every board is split into four overall quadrants, and some of these pyramid positions actually split two quadrants, while others just exist within one. The pyramid tiles that exist in two quadrants will score for the matching temples in both of those quadrants. Now, I think the best way to understand this is to see a pretend scoring in action. Let's look over here, and if the game was to end right now, we would start by scoring this pyramid tile. It is within this quadrant, so we would count all of the red temples in that quadrant, and in this case, there is one. This tile is on the ground level, so it has a modifier of two, so that's two times one, or two victory points. Now, let's just pretend we had another red pyramid tile that was over there. When we scored this one, we would once again look for all of the red temples in that quadrant, and as you can see, we place this temple so that it is on the line. That means it exists in both of these quadrants, so once again, this would be two times one, or two victory points. Looking over here, this blue pyramid tile exists in two quadrants, so that means it'll be worth two points for every blue temple in this half of the board, and the same can be said for this green tile over here, because it checks this half of the board. Now, in this current example, every one of these pyramid tiles is just multiplied by one temple because we don't have that many temples out here. But with that in mind, let's actually focus over here on the orange player's board. If they were to score, we could start with this green pyramid. It's on the line, so it would be worth two points for every green temple in the top half of their board, but they don't have any, so that's two times zero or no points. The same goes for this red pyramid tile down here. Now, that's not the case for their blue tiles. As you can see, this pyramid tile exists in two different quadrants. It's on the bottom, so it has a 2x multiplier, and there are two blue temples within the area. That means this is worth 2 times 2, or 4 points. Then we can look to this one, and it's the same thing. It's only going to check this quadrant, but again, there are two blue temples, so that is also 2 times 2, or 4 points. So far, the orange player is doing great, but then they also have this new blue pyramid tile that they placed. It's on the second or third level, which means it has a 3x multiplier, again, for all of the tiles within its quadrant. There are two blue temples here, and that has a 3x modifier, so that's 3 times 2, or 6 points. So right now, blue would be getting 14 victory points for all of their pyramid scoring, and all of that is coming from their blue pyramid tiles. So, you can see this is why the orange player decided to stack that tile there, because they could see that it's already worth 6 points, and could potentially be worth even more if they're able to get more blue temples into the bottom right quadrant of their board. Of course, they are missing out on some of these bonuses, but they figure they'll probably get around to doing those later on, and they wanted to place this here while it was relatively easy to do so. The way it is now, that second tier spot is no longer in their architect's reach. Just to completely illustrate that, once again, the architect only sees these six, and that position is not entirely within those six, so they could only place this when their architect is over here or over there looking that way on their city. Now, as I said before, the only end game points we get are scoring these pyramid tiles that are multiplied against the temple tiles that we have, and this is where the vast majority of our points are going to come from in the game, so it's really important to try and position the correct color pyramid tiles and these temples in the right positions on your board. Well, at this point, orange is done with their turn, so that means the blue player can now take their turn. After considering their options, they are going to use two of their action discs, and they're going to place them right over here. As you can see, they're the first player to go on to this bonus, and we've seen this before. That is going to gain them one victory point, and this will also act as if they have one more strength. Now, in this case, their strength is going to be one for the disc, plus these two, so that would be three normally, but that increases it by one, so this is actually four strength total. Now, the first thing they do is gain one point, which will bring them up to 15, 
and now they are going to build a production building. Their strength value is four, again, because of that bonus, and they are going to take this size four gold building. Their architect is right over there, and they have quite a few options available to them. If they wanted to maximize the gold they would get from this, they could put it like this. That would get them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gold total. Another option available to them is they could put this like that. In this case, they would only get one, two, three, four, five gold, however. That being said, by doing this, they would cover all of these masks, and they would then take the next highest mask token of that type, and in this case, that would be seven victory points for them right now. Now, there are many other options available to them, including maybe just splitting the difference. They could maybe put it like that. In this case, they would make one, two, three, four, five, six gold instead of five, but then, of course, there's one spot open, and they could also do that, which would make them seven gold, but again, they would be opening up another one of these spots that they would have to fill in order to actually claim that mask token. Now, in this case, Blue did invest two action discs to take this, and they don't really want to waste a bunch of resources with that in mind, so they're going to go with this compromise, and they figure they should be able to fill this in with a temple relatively easily later on, especially if they get a green temple that could fit like this or like that, and they're already incentivized to do that with a green temple here and a green pyramid tile there. So this means they can now populate the surroundings of this tile, and this is going to gain them seven gold total. Now I want to once again reiterate that you only score these masks once they are covered with tiles. Resources do not count for fully covering them. Well, blue is done with their turn, so they can move their architect. And now it's once again time for us to take our turn. Now I think I see a really good turn for us, and it is going to start by building a pyramid. In particular, I want to go onto this. That way we gain access to a influence action of our choice before or after we do our turn. Now let's do this after the main action. And with this, I am somewhat tempted to put multiple tokens down. The reason for that is because we are actually going to build two pyramids this turn, and I'll show you how we do that later on. And the strength value of this would apply to both of those. If we just go with one of these, our strength value is two, which means we will of course have to spend four gold and one wood. But if we do this and build two of these, we would only spend three gold and one wood. Effectively, this one token would save us two gold. Now that being said, I still like the idea of holding on to this to gain some more production buildings later on in this round, so we'll just go with the one token. Now let's build a pyramid piece, and we will build a red one. As I said before, our strength is two, so that means we have to spend two gold plus two more gold as a strength penalty because this is a size four, and then this also costs one wood. When we focus down here, we have two wood and we also have eight gold, so let's spend the four gold along with one wood, and then of course we will get two victory points, so that will bring us up to twelve. Now we have to place this within our architect's reach, and that is these six positions, and let's place this down right over there. Oops, I forgot to show the architect. As you can see, they are down here. Now, that icon is going to let us take any one worship tile of our choice. This might seem a little silly, considering we already have three, so do we really need a fourth? And my answer to that is yes, because we have a really cool turn brewing. Now we can cover this up and then immediately take a worship tile. And the one I want is this. That is three points, and it also lets us do another build action, and this is going to be how we build another pyramid on this same turn. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We need to refresh this to show another one. Oh, this one gives you seven points as long as you have three green temples built when you activate that worship tile. Well, that's finished our main action, and now we gain access to one influence action of our choice. We are going to use that to activate this worship tile here. That will get us three points, and then it will get us another influence action of our choice. So let's put this underneath the stack. Then we can gain the three points, and now we have another influence action, and let's once again use it to activate a worship tile. We have these three here, and this is the one I want to do. That is going to get us three more points, and now we can perform a build action of any type of our choice. As I mentioned earlier on in this turn, I want to use this to build a second pyramid tile onto our board within the same turn. Let's once again take a red, and once again, this is going to cost two gold and a wood, plus two more gold to make up for the size difference, this four down to the strength two. So that's going to be one wood and four gold, which we just happen to be perfectly set up to do. We have used just about all of our resources to do it, but this was a pretty big turn. Now, at this point, we have to place this down into our architect's reach, and let's place it right here. When we focus in, that bonus is going to gain us a size two wood production building. And whenever we gain tiles from bonuses like this, we take them from the supply, not from the main board. Remember, we only take these when we perform the actions associated with those spots. 
Now we do have to place this within our architect's reach, and before I do that, I don't want to forget that we got two more points for building yet another pyramid tile. So this has been a very lucrative turn, and now when we place this, we'll get a bunch of wood, and that's going to help the fact that right now we don't have that many resources. We did spend all of our gold, I suppose, but still, this is a very strong turn, and we've set ourselves up to stack a tile onto the second level right over there. Once again, we have to place this in the bottom half because that's where our architect's reach is, and I feel like we should put it in this quadrant instead of that one. The reason for that is because we are really incentivizing trying to put more red temples into that quadrant, and if we put this down over there, it's potentially just going to get in the way. So I think leaving that more open to try and squeeze some red temples in there is a good idea, and when we put this over here, let's go ahead and cover up some of these pink masks. The pink mask does score pretty well when we cover all of the spots, and as you can see, we could only cover two out of these five at most. Of course, we could also just cover one to get the maximum amount of wood out of this production building. Considering we don't have any wood right now, I do think that's probably a good idea. Yeah, we'll go with this, and then we'll try to cover these up later. For now, I think we want to build back our resource engine, so now we get to place six wood around that tile. Well, that was quite the turn overall. I feel pretty good about it, and we can end our turn by moving our architect clockwise around our board. All right, it's time for the orange player to go, and they have decided to place one action disc right up here. Remember, each of these spots can have a maximum of four discs, including the bonus disc on the board, so that has brought this up to a maximum of four. Now they can perform an action with a strength value of four, and remember, if they decided to do an influence action, the strength doesn't matter, but in this case it does because they would like to construct a production building. As you can see, the size for gold building is gone, and the number of tiles that are in this market at the start of each round is going to change with the player count. In this case, they could of course go lower with this, but they've decided to build a size 4 stone production building, and as you can see, they have the strength to make that happen. Next up, they have to place it within their architect's reach, which is this half of their city, and they are going to place it like that. Now, this is relatively inefficient for the purposes of making stone, but it is great for the purposes of covering up masks. As you can see, that covers up all four of those yellow masks, which means they can take the highest value yellow mask token, and that will immediately gain them four victory points. That will bring them up to 16, and now they will place stone around all of the adjacent open spots to this production building. So, three will go over here, they will also place one up there, and now they have the option of putting a stone right there if they want to. If they do this, they would discard the wood to make room for it, and considering they have so much stone already, they've decided to forego the stone and instead leave the wood. This means technically they only made four stone, but of course they only used one of their action discs because they worked on the back of the blue player's action discs to get all that strength, and they liked the idea of getting the most lucrative yellow mask while they could. Well, let's finish their turn so the architect can move, and now it's time for the blue player to go. After considering their options, they are going to place one of their tokens onto this spot. That is going to gain them one victory point, and they will also gain one resource of their choice. That point will bring them to 16, and they'll take a gold, and they are going to put it way over here in the corner. After that, they are going to do a build action, and they have a strength value of 2. Now, the only thing they could actually build is a red temple, because all of the green and blue temples have been built in this round, and the red temple has a size of 5. That means there is a strength difference of 3, so they will have to spend the stone and the gold as normal, and then 3 more stone. So that is 4 stone and 1 gold to construct this temple. They've decided to spend this gold right here, and then the 4 stone will be these 4. After that, they can place this temple into the top half of their board, and they've decided to place it like this. That covers up all but two more of these masks. Interestingly enough, they have two of that specific type with two masks remaining, so they've set themselves up to try and get a couple of those lucrative ones. Of course, they do have to actually finish covering those up to get those points. Either way, by doing this, they've also sort of surrounded these production buildings, but again, remember, every time you do a produce influence action, you only make one cube, so they just realistically need one open space around these, and they don't mind going so close after spending all of the initial resources those buildings came onto the board with. After building this temple, they of course do gain a red worship tile, and they like the look of this one. That gives five points as well as a single size stone or wood production building when it's activated. Now we can see a new one, and that's one we've seen already. It gives three points and then lets you do another influence action. Now, I know so far the only influence actions we've seen is this one to activate those worship tiles, and that's because running production makes more sense later on once you have more production buildings and you spent a bunch of resources. And then over here, the favor track is much more about trying to get that perfect worship tile that just got flipped up when you maybe don't have something better to do on your turn. All right, that is going to finish up the blue player's turn. This means it's time for us to go again, and we do have two action discs remaining. 
Looking up here, there is a single gold production building left to be built in this first round, and I think I want it. In order to get there, we do need three strength, though, so I think let's just go on top of our previous token. We are now at three strength, and that is exactly what we need to construct this production building. Next up, we have to construct this into our city, and I am tempted to put it right there. That covers up three out of those four yellow masks, so we'd be one spot away from claiming that, but we would only make four gold. And if we went somewhere else like this, <laughs> that would make us eight gold, just like we had over here at the beginning of the game. Now, I did talk about trying to reserve this for as many red temples as we could, but we do have to keep in mind that there's only two red temples on offer each round, so we probably won't get that many over here, and we could put a red temple like this and another one like that, so realistically, this is not a terrible use of our space. You know what? I think I'm going to go for it. There's certainly room enough, I think, to get as many red temples in as we realistically could build before the game ends. So, let's go ahead and take our eight gold. And that has finished our turn. Next up, the orange player can go, and they've decided to go onto the last one of these open bonus tokens on the board. They're just going to place one of their tokens, and that will immediately gain them two victory points, which brings them up to 18. Now they have two strength, which they could use to build either this or that, or they could do the influence action for this section, and that is what they've decided to do. Remember, this option would let them produce one wood, one stone, and one gold at each one of their production buildings, whereas this option would just give them two of the size one production buildings. This is the one they've decided to go with, and they are actually going to take two wood buildings. So they can take both of those directly from the main supply. Remember, they could have split this up between them, but they had a reason to take two wood, and that reason is both of their worship tiles. This one can only be used to get them six points if they have four or more of these single size wood buildings. And this one is a multiplier with their green temples times the number of wood producing buildings they have. This is going to triple the number of wood producing buildings they have just by putting this down. They don't currently have any green temples, but they figure they'll probably work towards that. And this makes it much more likely they'll be able to get to the maximum of nine points if they ever activate this worship tile. Now, of course, Orange does have to place both of these down within their architect's reach. And they've decided to put one here and one over there. So they've covered up two masks, and they've also maximized the amount of wood they can get from both of these. They figure they could probably work around those placements to cover up these masks with relative ease with the various temple options that are out there. Either way, they can now put four wood around each of these because there are four empty spots around both. That has completed their turn, and now it's time for the blue player to go. They currently have one token, and they are really tempted to run production. They have four production buildings right now, so that would get them four resources. But they think instead this makes more sense. They'll go on top of there. That is going to get them four strength overall, and they are going to use that to build a size three stone building. This means they've technically wasted one strength, but they're still fine with that. They only put one action token down to actually get up to this. They, of course, have to place this within their architect's reach, which is this half of their board, and I don't think anyone's surprised to see them place it like that. This does mean they are only going to make three stone, and they certainly could have made more, but that does mean they've covered up all of those masks in this cluster, which means they will score the next highest mask of that type, and that will get them seven points immediately. They were at 16, so this brings them up to 23. All right, blue is done, so now we can take our turn, and this will certainly be our last turn of the round because we only have one action disc left. Now, I'd love to build this red temple right here, but the problem is I want to build it into this quadrant in order to score off of these tiles, but our architect is currently not reaching that. Of course, this tile is in that quadrant, so if we built this up here, then that would score, but I would much rather spend this investment in a placement that would score off of all of these red tiles. So instead, I think let's take a different pyramid tile. The only ones that are left are green, and we can put this token down onto realistically any of these. No matter what, that's going to give us a strength of one, two, three. Now let's build a green pyramid tile. That will get us two points immediately, and of course we have to spend two gold, a wood, and then one more gold, because our strength is three and the size is four. That's three gold total, and we can spend all of these just setting ourselves up to put a red temple right over there at some point in the future. And of course, we also have to spend a wood, so we'll spend this one here. We also get two points from the icon on the board, and now when we go to place this, we can put it right over here. That would get us a green temple from the supply immediately that we could place down, but that would also put this green scoring temple not in the same quadrant as this green temple that we already have. So I think it probably makes more sense to cover that up with a different pyramid tile type in the future, and instead place this over here. 
that gets this next to that green temple, and we could try to place another one over there later on. This will also get us two points and a small production building of our choice. Let's go for this. So that gets us two points. And then considering we have this worship tile that wants us to have one of each of the different stone production types, I think let's take a stone production building for this benefit. That means we have the one and two size stone buildings. So we just need the size three and the size four in order to complete this and get those 10 points. Now I say just, that's certainly a decent amount of effort that we'll have to put towards it, but the game isn't close to being over. So we still have time to make that happen. We do, of course, have to place this somewhere, and I figure we'll just go there. That will get us the maximum four stone for that spot, and we did cover up one mask. All right, that has finished our turn, so now the orange player can go. Orange has just one action disc left, and after considering their options, they're going to place it over here. Now, they actually want to do a favor track action, and because of that, they don't actually care what their strength is for this placement. They just needed to be able to place on one of these spots. Now, as you can see, none of them were already at four tokens, so they can go right over there, and then when they perform this action, they can simply move their favor token forward once. That is going to get them two victory points, and now they can get rid of one of their worship tiles and then take any of the six worship tiles currently face up on the board. Those two points will bring them up to 20, and then between these two tiles, they want to get rid of this one. That one does have a lower threshold, it's true, but they're pretty close to being able to complete it. They just need two more of those small wood buildings. And for this one, they currently don't have any green temples. They are likely to get at least one by covering this spot up at some point soon, but they like the idea of one of the other worship tiles more, and they've decided to get rid of this one. That means they have to put it face down to the bottom of that stack, and then the one that they want is this one right here. Now, this effect says they can spend any three resources to then build the temple of their choice. Considering the orange player has already invested so much in getting a bunch of these blue pyramid tiles, I think it's likely they're going to try to use this in order to build another blue temple over here, and when they do that, they could just do it with three wood, or three stone, or just whatever actually makes sense for them at the time, instead of actually matching the specific costs on the board. And remember, this also has nothing to do with strength, so you could spend all three of these to build a red one over here, for example. Normally those are more expensive, or you have to invest more actions into that strength, but this could be a way to get around it. Either way, they're not going to be using this during this round, of course, but it definitely opens up their plans for the future. All right, that's finished the orange player's turn, and now it would be time for the blue player, but we can see they don't actually have any action tokens in front of them. That means they must pass, and it is worth noting that you can pass when you still have actions in front of you, although that's rarely going to be a good idea for you. Now, once you pass, you will not take any more actions for the round, and it's also important to note that you do not move your architect when you do a pass turn. Now, after they pass, it'll go to us. We are obviously going to have to pass because we also have no action tokens. And over here, the orange player is also out of their action tokens. Now, again, you could potentially use all of your action tokens much quicker than your opponents. And if you pass, then they simply skip over you. And again, you do not move your architect on the turn you pass or any more during that entire round. Now, speaking of rounds, each round is going to come to an end once all players have passed. And as you can see, that is what just happened. That means we can now perform the end of round step. And this is pretty simple. We just look over here to the round track, and if this sun marker was on top of the eclipse marker, then the game would end immediately. Now, obviously, that is not the case, so now we can move into the next round and perform the new round steps. The first thing that we do is move this sun marker down, and as you can see, this is going to dictate the number of rounds that we have in the game. When you play a three-player game, you put this eclipse token on the three-player spot, and that shows that we will play three total rounds. But when you play a two- or four-player game, you instead put the eclipse token down there, and then you will play through four full rounds. The next thing that we have to do is take all of the action tokens that are currently out here and put those back in front of the players. After that, every player must give up one of their action tokens. That means we will all only have four tokens going into the next round. And of course, once we enter the third round, we will remove another one of these, so we would only have three action tokens going into the third and final round in a three-player game. If it was a four-player game, we would actually remove another one when we go into the fourth round, so you only start with two action tokens in the fourth round of a four-player game. I do want to point out that in a two-player game, all players begin with six tokens instead of the five that we had in this three-player game. The next thing that we have to do is take all of these bonus tokens, and we have to shuffle them up and then place them back out onto those nine locations. I do want to point out that you only use all nine of these spots in a three- or four-player game. If it's a two-player game, you just occupy these six spots there. 
After that, we now need to refresh the build board. Over here, we have to make sure there are two green, two blue, and two red pyramid tiles. And then over here, we have to make sure that there are two of the red, two of the blue, and two of the green temple tiles. And all of this is going to be the same no matter what the player count is. After that, we have to refill the buildings over here, and this will vary with the player count. No matter what the player count is, there's always going to be one of each building type, though. And then, if you're playing a two-player game, you just have to ensure that there is just one on all of these. If you're playing a three-player game, you have to make sure there are two of the size 2 stone and two of the size 2 wood. And if you're playing a four-player game, you also have to ensure there are two size 3 stone, two size 3 wood, and two of the size 3 gold. So, no matter what the player count is, there will always be just one size 4 gold and one size 4 stone building. The final thing that we have to do is pass the starting player marker clockwise, so that means the orange player will get to be the starting player in the next round, and now it would be time for us to start playing that round. That being said, I think I'm now going to bring this tutorial to a close. I've taught just about all of the rules to the game, and as you can see, we have all used five of our tokens, and in this round we have four, and in the next round we have three. That means overall in a three-player game, you have 12 tokens to use for the entire game, and since we've used five, we've essentially played almost half of a game. That being said, we managed to do quite a few things in that first round. We were able to get a bunch of these pyramid tiles, and even though we haven't gone up to the second level just yet, we are well positioned to do so. And obviously over here, the orange player is already at the second level with a couple of those temples that's already giving them a bunch of endgame points. We can also see the orange player has a ton of stone and wood, although they currently don't have any gold, which could become a problem for them, because I'm certain they're going to want to keep taking those pyramid tiles. Out of all of us, it seems like the blue player did the least. Perhaps it was a mistake for them to spend all 8 of that wood just to get 12 points. 12 points is significant, but of course you need those resources to actually keep your construction going to build up a bigger engine in order to do bigger and better things as the game goes on. I don't think the blue player is necessarily out of it at this point, but it does seem like they did less than the rest of us. On that note, I think I'm going to bring this one to a close. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play Founders of Teotihuacan, and I would like to ask that if you have any comments about the game, if any part of it really jumped out to you, or maybe if you saw a turn where you feel like we should have done something differently, then please comment about it down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.